Hi, I'm Ken Shorley. This is a video about the Mello Audio MIDI Commander. And the question I want to answer is, can you use this foot controller for Ableton Live? Uh, the spoiler alert is yes. Is it really intuitive and easy to set up? Not really, but that's the purpose of this video. I'm going to walk you through and show you how you can customize the Mello Audio MIDI Commander for Ableton Live. So here is the Mellow Audio MIDI Commander. It's a fairly straightforward foot controller with these assignable buttons here. There are also these two buttons, which are mostly used to toggle up and down through different menus. If we turn it on, you'll see, I mean, this unit was designed mostly for electric guitar players, so they could, um, they could interface directly with pedal boards and with, with um, software effects and so forth. So there are some presets, and when you first turn it on, it will open to a preset. If you want to set this up with Ableton Live, you have to go into one of the two custom menus. So let's turn it off. In order to enter the, the setup menu, you need to hold down this set button in the bottom right while you're turning it on. And then it'll take you to setup. There are three toggles. There's MIDI channel, which will assign all, these are all different presets. And you'll notice seven and eight are labeled custom one and custom two. So those are the ones that we want to use. So the first thing you want to do is to assign a specific MIDI channel. My advice for this is if you're using other gear, like for instance, I love this guy over here, the Novation Circuit, and the way it sends MIDI data, channel one, synth one sends to MIDI channel one, synth two to MIDI channel two, and the drum channel send to channel 10. So especially drums on channel 10, that's a fairly common MIDI setup. So the first thing you want to do is to select a MIDI channel, which is not going to interfere with other gear that you may have running. So you can select, there are up to 16 channels, but again, I would choose something a bit obscure. I, I like, you know, 14 or 15. It generally, if you're, if you're sending MIDI data on one of those channels, it's less likely to interfere with your other gear. So that's the first step. Choose your MIDI channel. Then, toggle over, and it's this button too, which toggles through the three uh, tabs. None of this is very intuitive, I have to admit, reading the instruction manual, but that's how you do it. So you toggle through and you can set up custom two. In here, if you go use this down button over here to go down, 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 here's where we get to the first important setting we wanna change. Now, the, there are settings for key they're, they they called key one two three four and then key A B C and D. So the first setting we want to change right now it it defaults to PC number, which is a program change number. For in order for this to work with Ableton, I believe we use this button here. Yeah. So button B toggles the changes. You select CC rather than PC. It will have already a default number. It's this is saying CC number eighty. Unless you need to change that for some specific reason for your setup, you probably don't need to. But this next one you want to change. This is key one. So all of these commands are for this, this key, this, this button here. Right now it says toggle on. For most of the functions that I like to use in Ableton, I select toggle off. That means if, if you have toggle on, whenever you press the button, you need to press it a second time to, to, to lose that function, and then you press it again to get the same function. Mostly what I want to do is just press it and then press the same button to get the same function. So you need to say toggle off. And then you repeat this step. Change PC to CC, toggle on to toggle off. And I'm just gonna go through and do this. Now we're on key A, A, B, C, D, okay? So A, CC, oh, oh, interesting. This is already set to toggle off. That's cool. Um, B, CC, it already says toggle off. C, toggle off, D, toggle off. Now that's it. There's no need to save this, but in order to, to use it, you have to just turn it off. So it should save. When you turn it on, if you want to select what we were just doing was custom two, there are eight presets and custom one and custom two are assigned to these two buttons. So when you turn it on and you want to to use custom two, hold this button D down as you turn it on. It will do this flashing sequence and then you'll see you're using custom two. And it says it's receiving USB power 
and it's sending on channel 14. So when you press these buttons, it will indicate the CC number that each of them is sending, okay? And the velocity, 127 means that the toggle is off. It's just, boom, it's just sending it. Okay, let's move to our Ableton setup and show you how this integrates. Okay, there's one more thing to check just before we start MIDI mapping, and that's to go into the preferences in live and select the MIDI tab. Make sure that Ableton recognizes MIDI Commander. On my version, it says TS MIDI 2.0. If you have a newer version of this, it might say something different, but just make sure that Ableton recognizes that for input and output. And if it does, then we're good to go. We can start MIDI mapping. Okay, let's integrate our newly customized MIDI commander with an Ableton Live session. Now I have one set up here, which is, I don't know, it's not finished, it's just something I'm working on, but I just wanna show you how we can integrate this with that. So first, we turn on the machine. So because we used our customization in Custom 2, we hold down button D as we turn it on. And then after it does its flashy sequence, it will show, here we are, in Custom 2. Okay, so far so good. Now we start MIDI mapping what we want. Now what I'm gonna do is just very simple to show you how you can set this up. Um, you, can, you can map whatever is mappable. You can map now to these buttons. So what I'm going to do is to select this track, the track launch button. I'm going to assign that to button A, which is CC102. That's, that was the default number it was set to. I didn't change that. You can select specifically what CC number you want this to transmit. I'm gonna repeat that, this track launch for button D, I mean B, and then number three for button C, and button D. So now, uh, yeah, so CC 102, 103, 104, and 105, okay? Now I also want to be able to stop whatever's playing in that track. So this tiny little um, stop button, I'm going to map, because I'm mapped to launch here to A, I'm going to also sort of pair it up with this button one, which is right above. So this is start and this is stop. And I'll repeat that. This stop button, map it here. This one, map it here. This one, map it here. That's it. Now, if you know MIDI mapping in Ableton, you know you can map lots of different things. Just to show you the simple functionality of this, I will now magically start this and track A will play. This one will cause track, track A, not track A. I'm looking at A, button A, cause track one to start, right? And then button one, stop. And that's it. Basically start and stop for all of these. And then you can get them all going. There's lots more you can do, but that is the simple that is the simple setup to use a MIDI commander. The first thing is you get into the custom menu, okay? Custom one and custom two. You can set up two completely different setups if you want. If you use one for production and one for live looping, you can have completely different setups. You get in there. The first thing you do is select a unique MIDI channel to transmit data. I found this, it, it makes things a lot easier than having the risk of sending a signal that's going to interfere with one of your other MIDI devices. So choose a specific one through one to 16. You can choose whichever one you want. I, because I use this in a certain way, I put it in a place MIDI speaking that it's not going to interfere. So I do that first. Then I make sure I change every button from a PC number to a CC number. And then because of the way I use it, and this is up to you, I, I select toggle off and then you're ready to go. I hope this video helps. If you haven't subscribed and you feel like it, please do. If you don't feel like it, no problem. Thanks for stopping by and stay tuned for more videos.